Hey there, everybody. This is Dr. Donnelly Snipes. I wanted to take a chance um, or take some time and move from talking about all the doom and gloom and coronavirus this and influenza that to talking about what we can do to be happy. And when I worked in residential and even working with people in outpatient, but it was especially prominent or to me when I was working in residential that a lot of times people have forgotten what to do to make themselves happy. They forgot what they like. We get so caught up in the day-to-day -day activities of, you know, get up, eat breakfast, go to work, come home, go to sleep and repeat that we forget what makes us happy. And part of me wants to tell you to tap into that inner child. I know I'm tapped into mine and, you know, I will watch cartoons. I don't build blanket forts anymore because my kids are too old for that. But I will, there are a lot of things that I will do. I can regress with the best of them, let me tell you. But in today's presentation, we're really just going to talk about um, what you can do or what you can start doing to infuse happiness. What our feelings, our anger, our anxiety, our sadness, our happiness are all created by neurotransmitters. And we need to get our bodies to secrete, to dump, if you will, some of those happy neurotransmitters. Think of it like a bath. If you think of the hot as the uh, unpleasant emotions, we want to balance those out. We want to kind of, we want to make it a warm bath or a cool bath so we feel energized and excited. We're just going to go through some of the pacer aspects of in increasing happiness. The first one we're going to start out is with P. Physically, what can we do to increase happiness? And I know a lot of you are not going to like this when I start out by saying exercise, but it's true. Exercise causes your body to release serotonin. It also increases your oxygenation, so you have more energy. When you exercise, it gets your heart rate up and can make you feel a little bit more energized. Now, I'm not talking about going out and sprinting a mile. I'm talking about walking around the block or doing something at somewhere between 45 and 60% of your target heart rate zone. You're not even really breathing that hard at that point. And in that area, it actually reduces your stress hormones and increases your, what I call your happiness hormones. What can you do to exercise? Play with the dog, clean the house, go on a walk, Gardening, you know, none of these things is necessarily, you don't have to go to a gym. You can turn on the music and dance around your house like a crazy person if that's what you want to do. I've done it before and I've done it recently. <laughs> so this isn't just something that uh, you have to do when you've got kids or whatever. I can't use that excuse anymore. My kids are grownups now, so I have to own my own silliness. I enjoy being silly. I will still download apps on my phone that are not knock jokes. And I appreciate puns and silly, um, silly memes online. Yesterday, I was so excited, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I actually went on Facebook. And while I was on Facebook, I was actually laughing. Usually Facebook makes me depressed, but there was so much out there. People were finding humor in life, and I was so gratified, I guess, that people were, were able to start finding some, some humor and recognizing that dwelling on the negative ain't going to do any, any good. Sunlight is the next thing we can do to increase our happiness. Now, here in Middle Tennessee, it has been just nasty dreary, and it's supposed to continue to be nasty dreary. But when there are those little glimpses of sunlight, get out there. We know that seasonal affective disorder is made worse or can be made worse by lack of sunlight because then we have low levels of vitamin D. If you feel like you're feeling kind of sluggish, go outside or sit near a bright window. Even if the sun is not coming through, even if it's overcast, sunlight is still coming down through the clouds and the ozone layer and whatever else and will help your body make vitamin D so you feel happier. Sunlight also helps set your circadian rhythms so your body knows when it's supposed to be awake and when it's supposed to sleep. Your circadian rhythms also control your hunger and your satiation hormones and a bunch of other stuff. 
So sunlight is really good. If you can't get um, actual sunlight, bright, full spectrum light. And I do want to say hi to Johnny and Tina. I see that you have both um, uh, joined me today and I really appreciate that. Um, the next thing we can do physically, and this kind of goes along with exercise, is playing. Play with your cats, play with your dogs, you know, play balloon toss yourself. I don't care. Um, in our house, our dogs love balloons, so we get good belly laughs as well as some exercise if we try to play keep away from the dogs with the balloons. You know, it doesn't take much to amuse us. But do things play. You know, find things that you enjoy. If you've got kids or dogs, it's a whole lot easier, but there are things that you can do. If you are artistically inclined at all, you know, try crafting. That is something you can do with your body that you can occupy yourself and make something that you enjoy. You know, I crochet um, dishcloths and hot, hot pads and other things. I don't like getting into those really intense patterns and things because I don't want to have to think that hard, just the way I am. But it makes me happy when I have something to show. If you're not a crocheter, um, one of my best friends does a lot of woodworking. If that's what you enjoy, then by all means, if you've got the time and the ability to do that, do that. Cooking is something else that you can do, and it's a double whammy physically. Not only are you doing something that's active, so you're not sitting around just dwelling and dreading and whatever, you're focused on cooking, but you can make some really nutritional meals. So you're fueling your body with really awesome um, building blocks that it can use to make the hormones and everything it needs to make in order you, for you to feel happy and stay healthy. So cooking is awesome. A lot of us are not wanting to go out to the store as much. So we're also experimenting with cooking with different things that are less perishable. I've discovered multiple more ways to cook lentils, beans, and rice over the past week or so. You know, my daughter's a vegetarian. I'm, I try to be a vegetarian, so I knew a fair number of ways, but we're experimenting now. Might as well. If you take a hot bath or a shower, that can help you feel better physically. Sometimes we just need to, you know, chill out. I hate taking baths. There's just I don't like baths, but I'll take a shower or I'll sit in a hot tub. I don't know why, but anything that you can do to help yourself relax and feel content will help your body release GABA, which is your natural Valium. Record yourself doing a silly dance and post it online if you have the stomach to do it. I don't know that I can actually record myself and share it with the public, but if you make other people laugh, one of the things I often say is, I don't care if you're laughing with me or at me, please just laugh. Well, that's one way to do it. If you insist on taking naps, you know, maybe you're hanging out around the house, you're working around the house, you start to get a little sleepy, especially after lunch, like most of us do. Try to keep your naps to less than 45 minutes if you absolutely have to take one in order to avoid messing up your circadian rhythms. So that's physically affectively or emotionally, what can you do? Well, affectively means triggering the opposite emotions. We want to trigger happiness. So watch funny videos, make a playlist of funny videos and share it on your YouTube channel or wherever you share it. Listen to comedians. You can download them on, you know, if you've got Amazon music or, you know, Sirius XM, or there's lots of different ones out there. I'm not super technologically inclined. Um, but make a playlist of comedians that you like to listen to. You know, dig up some of the old ones like Robin Williams and get a good belly laugh. Belly laughs release endorphins. Belly laughs increase oxygenation. And belly laughs release some of those feel-good chemicals like serotonin and GABA. So laugh. Figure out what it's going to take for you to laugh and make it happen. One of the things that I can do, and I should have uploaded it ahead of time, is just watch your own animals. Sometimes, and I'll combine this with the next one, giving your cat's nip. Um, I posted a video on my Facebook page the yesterday, I think. Um, my daughter's cat loves catnip. And we got a big box of something, I don't know what, from Amazon. And I got some fresh catnip, and 
I ground it up and I put it in the box and I closed the box and just cut a little hole in so it was holding most of the fumes or aroma from the catnip in there and she dove in and just went to town and she was a little bit psycho for you know the next hour or two running around the house and acting all excited we found that funny <laughs> and she was really happy so it was it was a win-win for everybody search online for gifs and videos that make you smile and share those don't just keep them for yourself share them online let's flood facebook and instagram and whatever social media you're on with things that make people smile we're tired of hearing about unpleasant stuff we we know that unpleasant stuff has a stronger valence than pleasant stuff at on the ratio of about five to one so for every unpleasant thing you see you need to see five pleasant things to balance it out well, let's make that happen. Cognitively, what can you do to increase your happiness? Read, or if you don't like reading, listen to a book or five. A lot of libraries have stuff online that you can check out. You can read it on your Kindle. You can read it on your tablet. You can listen to books on tape and it doesn't cost you anything. Or you can subscribe to a service where you can get that too. But this might be a great time to, you know, start working those brain cells a little bit. Learn a new skill. You can go on YouTube and learn how to do just about anything. I'm not going to say you're going to learn how to do it the right way, but you can learn how to do just about anything. Um, there's lots of tutorials online, for example, on drawing. And you can learn how to draw, how to draw perspective, you know, all kinds of things. You can find a lot of the old Bob Ross videos online so score for that something more simple you can identify five things every day that you're grateful for and that goes along with the things that I've been talking about lately spending 10 to 20 minutes every day where you say the only thing I'm gonna think about during this 10 to 20 minutes is what's positive in life and try to focus throughout the day turning your thoughts to what you can control when you start having thoughts about things that are out of your control tell yourself no i'm not going to focus on that because i can't control it what can i control in this situation and sometimes it may be just not paying attention to it turning off the news turning off whatever because you've heard it and what you can control is right in front of you environmentally make your environment cheerful if you want to be happy, you need to be a happy in a happy environment. You're probably not going to be happy if you are in a dark, dungeony, dirty, smelly, nasty place. So make it happy. Look around for colors and, you know, consider getting out um, old pillowcases and putting those on your pillows or whatever you can do to brighten up your air area with Colors that make you happy. I tend to like colors that are yellow, orange, cheerful, browns, warms. Some people like cooler colors, and that's that's awesome. You know, I actually do like an accent wall in purple. May not be the time to go to Home Depot and get paint, but think about ways that you can infuse color or make your environment more pleasant. Add pictures. Print out pictures. If you can't print pictures, you know, have a screensaver that you look at that makes you smile. Have screensavers on your desktops that make you smile. Create a um, digital photo album that just rotates with different pictures. We have that on our TV at home when our Roku goes to sleep. It rotates through all of our um, pictures in a particular Google, Google Photos album. And... You know, it's fun to watch because it reminds me some of them are from five, ten years ago. And just the occasional memory that it brings up makes me smile. We don't have a lot of printed pictures on our walls just because that's just not what I do. But, you know, having those having those photo displays is can be really um, encouraging. Uh, smells. Smells are one of our greatest uh, sensory triggers. Find smells that make you happy. I don't know if you can see right now. I have little wax tarts, 
And you don't, for a lot of these wax tarts, you don't even have to warm them up. I just have them sitting in my office right now. And periodically, because I tend to be a little bit of an antsy, antsy pants, I will pick them up and I will just hold them. And then my hands end up smelling like whatever it is. I don't know what this happens to be. I think this is uh, vanilla cupcake or something. But find things that you like the smell of. Look in your cabinet. You know, I don't like the taste of sage very much, but I love the smell of it. And we have a lot of sage in our in our spice cabinet. Uh, what can you cook? What can you make? What can you do? What perfumes do you have in your house? So you don't you don't necessarily have to go out anywhere. What smells do you like that you have access to? And how can you creatively make them available to you? And as I mentioned before, in physical, make sure you've got plenty of light. Um, light helps us know when it's time to stay awake. And if you are sheltering in place, then the darkness could be a um, bummer for you. So it's important to focus on light. Get a jump start on spring cleaning. That's something else you can do. I know I don't like it when I walk into our garages and I see our, our one car garage downstairs. The donkey's been staying in it over the winter. Um, her friend died, so I wanted her to be able to be closer to the family. You know, I don't know. I stopped short of letting her actually come into the house. But it's time to clean it out. It's time to get the hay out of there and to dust and do everything else that I do. So that's probably what I'm going to focus on this weekend. Order seeds and plant a garden. You can order seeds from places like uh, uh, Eden's Garden or Eden Brothers. One of them is essential oils and one of them is, is seeds. I can't remember which is which. Uh, but... There are a lot of places online that you can get that are reputable, that you can get seeds from relatively inexpensively. You can start your seeds indoors. So when this stuff is passed, you can plant them outside or create a windowsill garden. Look online for videos about how to uh, plant in containers. You know, some, some people live in apartments. All you've got is a balcony. No problem. You can even do some basic hydroponics using something called the Kratky method, even if you live in an apartment and grow some of your own stuff really easily. And I, I see Alicia says she's been starting planning and prepping for her gardening and it's really been helping. It's empowering because you think, you know what, I'm growing my own food and They've shown that just being around nature helps improve most of our moods. Um, relationally, this is the last part of Pacer. Um, relationally, take a hint from your dogs or your kids. You know, my dogs, when they start getting bored, they go take a nap and, you know, keep it less than 45 minutes. Um, when I start getting stressed out, you know what Brewster wants to do? He wants to play ball. You know, he doesn't want to sit and be anxious. He wants to go do something. He's like, okay, mom, you're upset. Let's go play. Let's go outside. Take a hint from your, from your dogs. You know, if they want to go outside, if they're excited, if it's a good day, well, then do that. Take a hint from your kids. You know, a lot of times kids aren't really recognizing what's going on. And if you are not exuding stress, hopefully, then, um, you know, they're probably going to be playing blocks or doing whatever they do. And, you know, we want to take a hint from them. They're not focusing on things that are outside of their control. They're focusing on their Legos or their Transformers or whatever it is they play with now. Do something for each person in your life in their love language over the next couple of weeks that you have plenty of time. You know, maybe you focus on one person each day. If you don't know what the love languages are, you can look online for the five love languages. Um, I always forget one of them. It is touch, acts of kindness, words of affirmation, um, quality time, and can anybody help me with the fifth one? Well, you can look it up. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> go online and figure out what your loved ones love languages are and do something for them in their love language if they are one who um responds well who feels loved when they get um 
words of encouragement or words of affirmation, then send them a card. If they feel loved when you do something um, to help them out, acts of service, figure out something that you can do that's an act of service. You may not be able to go over and help them clean their house right now if you're self-isolating, but think of things that you can do or make plans to do something and spend quality time in the near future. Um, gifts. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, gifts is the last one. Um, have a virtual watch party. You know, there are a lot of movies that are coming to online services this Friday, evidently, uh, that were in the theaters that they're, they're a little pricey. But if, you know, four people are watching it, then uh, in your household and four people are watching it in your friend's household, you can also be online with one another and have a virtual watch party or watching any of the sports that are going on. Flood Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with things that will make other people happy and laugh. Let's spread happiness. Let's spread joy instead of spreading other stuff. You can cook together with your housemates. You know, that can be your roommates. That may be your kids, whatever. Or you might, you know, find a recipe and virtually cook. You cook in your kitchen and your friend cooks in their kitchen and you're on FaceTime together talking about what you're doing if you try to do a recipe together. Uh, we need to get a little bit creative, but, you know, it can be fun. And go online, go to your friends' social media, go to their Facebook, go to their Twitter, go to their whatever. Share, like, and retweet. People feel warm and fuzzy when they notice that other people are noticing them. When they notice that people are paying attention, that they're caring, that, that they're caring and sharing, um, it makes people happy. So if you go on your friend's timeline or you see it on your Facebook feed and somebody has a post that makes you laugh, like it and share it. You know, pass the happiness along. So that kind of wraps up the overview of what I wanted to talk about today with infusing happiness, remembering that you can increase your happiness physically, affectively, or emotionally, cognitively, environmentally, and relationally, which, you know, that spells out PACER if you want to remember it that way. There's lots of stuff we can do to make it easier for us to feel happy, to encourage our bodies to secrete GABA and serotonin and dopamine and endorphins and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have some questions, so I'm gonna switch topics a little bit now. Um, Lynn asks if I would talk about complex trauma. Complex trauma happens, and any trauma, you know, complex or otherwise, complex is generally the result of repeated traumas or traumas that happen out of order. For example, a child dying before a family member. But during this time when people are stressed, when people are focused on people dying, remember that every year, tens of thousands of people die from the flu. So... You know, this is not something that is specifically new to this particular situation. What is new is the panic and the isolation and the uh, procedures that our government happens to be taking right now. There's a lot of, there are some things that are new. And for people who've experienced trauma in their past, um, this may trigger some of those feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. And we want them to recognize what is the same in this situation. There are some things that are out of our control, but also what is different? What do you have power over? What can you control? But also to be kind to themselves when they notice they're feeling anxious, accept it mindfully, and then identify what is it that I need to do for me in order to improve the next moment. Complex trauma is not something that goes away overnight. You know, some people struggle with it for years. Some people live with it and learn how to learn how to live a rich and meaningful life in addition to having complex trauma. And it's important to not compare yourself to other people and recognize how you're doing right now. Given all the circumstances, how are you doing right now? And look and say, you know what? All things considered, I'm doing pretty daggum well. Or you know what? All things considered, there are some things I could do differently. 
let me make a list of three things I could start doing differently today um, in order to feel like I am safer and more empowered. Zylona says, my partner's coughing all the time and I'm freaking out that it's coronavirus. Well, go to the CDC and look at the symptoms of coronavirus. One of the things that I've read repeatedly is that for most people, there's going to be a fever. Uh, not always. There are some people who are carriers who are asymptomatic. There's a lot of ifs and stuff. But we also have to remember that there are a lot of... Um, allergies going around just because it's flu season and coronavirus season doesn't mean that it's not allergy season and I know for me especially because we've had the windows closed up for so long and we've got animals in the house my allergies are going absolutely crazy but I also know that how I feel and that I feel fine I just I feel allergic and when I take my allergy medicine I tend to feel somewhat better um but paying attention to what that is, it also is a good reminder that regardless of whether it's allergies or sickness or cold or flu or whatever, it's important to practice good hygiene. So you, maybe you do want to increase how often you wipe down your switch plates, your mobile devices, and your door handles, um, and making sure that your partner is paying attention to um, his or her symptoms and taking their temperature regularly and consulting with your physician if there's any concern that they may actually have the virus but remember there are a lot of reasons that people cough and it's important to look at the probability versus the possibility all right um are there any other questions? Did I answer the questions that you wanted me to answer? Um, you know, I'm looking at the stuff that's coming through, and I really appreciate the kind comments. Um, I did not know that my comments were off on the webinars, so I will have to figure out how to make that work. I'm still learning this whole live streaming thing, but um, I am so thrilled that you all chose to join me today. And if you have topics that you are interested in learning about, you want me to do a video on, you want me to do a live broadcast, please feel free to email me at support at allceus.com. I am also planning on, once this period is over um, and we get back into more of a routine, I'm planning on doing a monthly uh, live broadcast. I won't be doing them as often. I'll only be doing them uh, once a month for anyone who is, well, anyone in the general public. I don't even think you have to be subscribed. But if you're subscribed, then you will be notified uh, by email when, I, uh, when I'm going to be doing those. So please remember to click the subscribe button. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> please remember to click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when we add additional videos also click the little bell right next to it and that they will send you a push notification or something when we upload new videos in response to your question and then i will actually leave um the American uh, Centers for Disease Control has told us that wearing masks is not helpful at all. And they've actually, except for healthcare workers, they have discouraged people from wearing masks. Um, I am not a uh, virologist or whatever they call the people that know about viruses, but the advice that we've been given is that masks really don't help that much. I would think they would, but again, that is not my area of expertise. Okay, everybody, have a happy day. Have a wonderful day, and please try to spread some of that happiness and make someone else's day happy too.